You've seen the title of this video. I know exactly why you guys are here. You need to bulk up. Well, if you stick around right to the end of the video, I'm gonna tell you exactly how I've managed to put on 12 kilos in just over seven months. For those who don't know me, my name is Jane. I'm a personal trainer and online coach. And over the past seven months, I've been going through one of my bulks and I've managed to put on 12 plus kilos through a moderately paced bulk. Now, when I very first got into the gym, I was exactly where you were. I was very, very skinny. Weighed only 63 kilos, now I'm 83, so I'm a full 20 kilos heavier. And in this video, I'm gonna break down everything you need to know about a successful bulk. Now I'm gonna be splitting it into two parts. And the reason why it's not three is because recovery is pretty simple. You should just be sleeping seven to eight hours. It's pretty much all there is to it. Don't try to overcomplicate it with any fancy techniques. So for that reason, the majority of this video is just going to be split into diet and training because these are the two most important things. Right, so starting off with the diet, and the most important thing you guys need to remember is that you need to be in a caloric surplus meaning that you guys are consuming more calories than your maintenance number. Now this specific number will vary depending on your genetics and how fast or slow you wanna take the bulk, but for a moderately paced bulk, you wanna be eating enough to gain you roughly half a kilo of body weight per week. Keep in mind, you can go for what is called a lean bulk. This is gaining popularity these days. The reason why I personally don't go for lean bulks is because I don't wanna be bulking for a longer period than 12 months. I like to keep my bulks around six to nine months and for that I choose moderately paced and that way you know for sure that you're going to be building some good quality muscle tissue as well. So it is fairly simple to find your maintenance calories. You can go to a free website like caloriecalculator.net, enter your body metrics and then it will spit you a number for weight gain and for weight loss. So for me personally, I started bulking at 2,900, which was 100 calories above my maintenance. Now, as you switch from a cut to a bulk, you're gonna put on weight a bit easier because you are now consuming carbohydrates. But from there, I kept increasing my calories each week to try hit that half a kilo of body weight gain per week. And you will start to plateau, so you do need to up and up the calories. So towards the latter end of what is now seven months of bulking, I'm eating 4,000 calories per day. Now along with that of course the most important macronutrient which is protein. How much protein should you get in? There's different numbers all around the internet. There's some people saying you only need to eat body weight. Some people saying you can build good quality muscle on 1.3, 1.6, blah blah blah. I like to go for two grams per kilo of body weight because I know that this is a safe number. Too much in my opinion is way better than too little and no it's not real. Your kidneys aren't going to shut down from having too much protein. They've done clinical trials where people were able to eat up to four grams of protein per kilo of body weight and they were still absolutely fine. So I recommend you aim for two grams of protein per kilo of body weight. So those two things are the main two things to focus on when it comes to your diet, both the protein and the overall calories. Your carbs and fats, you will get plenty of anyway because of the amount of food that you will be eating. But if you really wanted to dive deep and fine tune those things, then you can look further into that. So now that you know your maintenance calories and you know roughly how much protein you're gonna eat, the most important step is actually tracking those calories. Now, a lot of people ask me, why do I track calories on a bulk? Well, it's because I've been one of those kids before that have said, I'm eating, I'm eating so much, bro, and I just can't gain weight, and I used to blame my metabolism, blah, blah, blah. But the reality is you're not eating enough, okay? If you are not gaining, you are not eating enough. So tracking your calories is a easy way to know 100% that you are or aren't eating enough. Now, of course, I'm not saying it can't be done without tracking calories, but I'm definitely gonna take a 95% chance of success rather than a 50% chance of success. There are plenty of free apps you can use as well. I personally use MyFitnessPal that has been around the industry for probably the longest and I find it's the most easy to use. Now, when it comes to what foods to actually eat, I like to keep my diet about 50-50 and it's absolutely essential that you have some high calorie, high protein recipes up your sleeve that you can use in your bulk. I'll give you guys a quick example of one of mine. One of my favorites is a chicken carbonara that I make that has chicken, bacon, 
bacon, creamy carbonara sauce, and pasta. It's very high calorie, high protein, and it's very cost effective as well. It only cost about $4.50 AUD per meal, which is pretty cheap with how everything is going these days. And another one of my bulking favorites is a butter chicken that I like to make. Literally just using rice, naan bread, chicken, and a pre-made butter chicken sauce. So if you guys want more of those high calorie, high protein recipes, I'll leave a link in the description below. I have an ebook with 21 high protein recipes that you can use either on a bulk or a cut. So make sure you go check that out. So right, just a little recap. You wanna be in a calorie surplus. You wanna be aiming to gain about half a kilo of body weight per week. You wanna be tracking these calories and you wanna be eating two grams of protein per kilo of body weight. If you combine all of these things, then you virtually have a 95% chance of success. You will gain weight. But weight isn't the only thing that we are looking to gain. We do wanna be building good quality muscle tissue. So how do you do that? Well, you pair your diet with good training. If you're eating in a calorie surplus and you're training like a pussy, then you're not going to grow. You're just going to get fatter. So what does good training actually look like? Well, let's break it down. So first of all, let's talk about splits. You may have heard the term bro split, push pull legs, Arnold split. Uh, full body split. It doesn't really matter what sort of split you choose, as long as you know that you're going to be able to commit to it, and as long as you get enough sets of each muscle group per week. So for example, if you know that you can only make it to the gym three times a week, then choosing a full body program is gonna be much better than trying to stick to a five day program and inconsistently showing up two to four times per week. And again, if you guys need help choosing a program that's right for you, I have some free programs that I will again leave a link to in the description. So once you have your program, you now need to know how to actually train hard enough. So what I want you guys to do is train at least one set of each exercise to failure, not close to failure, not when you start to feel the muscles burn, but until you physically can't get another well-performed rep. Now, I know a lot of people will preach taking every set to failure. I personally enjoy taking all of my sets to failure, but again, it comes down to being realistic and choosing a style of training that's going to allow you to be more consistent. So if you wanna leave one to two reps in reserves for the first and second set, then that is completely fine. As long as you're taking at least one of your sets to mechanical failure, Again, mechanical failure is when you can't get another rep with good form. Now, it is important to mention your form is going to be very crucial as well because if you train with shit form or your ego lift, you do risk injuring yourself. And then again, you're going to be out of the gym and you're going to go back to looking like shit. So you've got a structure. You're training hard and you're doing it with good form so you're not gonna get injured. The last piece to that puzzle is now progressively overloading on your lifts. So what this means is that you are aiming to slowly increase the total load that you put your muscles under each session. And this can be done in a few different ways. You can either increase the weight, increase the reps, or slow down all your reps and increase the amount of time that your muscles are under tension. Now, the way I personally like to use progressive overload is I'll choose a weight that I can fail between 10 to 12 reps. If I make it to 12 reps, I will then increase the weight. If I then increase the weight, and I perform less than eight reps, I will drop the weight until I can fail between eight and 12. So this means even if you don't make it to 12, then that is completely okay. Let's say you're barbell bench pressing, for example, and you pick a weight and you can only perform 10 reps. That is completely fine. Next session you come in, you're gonna aim for 11, and then you're gonna aim for 12. And then as soon as you get that 12th rep, you're then going to increase by the smallest increment you can, and most commonly, that's 1.25 each side. 
And that's pretty much it. It is literally that simple. So let's quickly go over everything. So you're eating in a calorie surplus. You are tracking your calories. You're eating two grams of protein per kilo of body weight. You're choosing high calorie, high protein meals so that you can eat less meals a day and fit your calories in. You're sticking to a consistent workout routine where you can preferably train 10 sets of each muscle group per week. You're taking at least one set of your exercise to failure and you're utilizing progressive overloads increase the total training volume every session. And then of course, you're sleeping seven to eight hours every single night. Now, if you do all of these things, I can almost guarantee that you will build muscle and you will bulk up. A big part of it will also come down to patience. A lot of people expect to see results after four weeks, but that just doesn't happen. You probably won't even notice visual results until about three months or 12 weeks in. But that being said, that is gonna be all from me today, guys. Like I said earlier on, I will leave the links to all those resources in the comments section down below. And if online coaching is something that you feel like you need, you need an extra hand bulking or losing weight this year, I will also leave a coaching application link down below. I'll be running a transformation challenge in June and the winner of that transformation challenge will take home a cash prize of $500 AUD. So if that is also something that you guys are interested, I'll leave a description for that in the comment section below. Other than that, I really hope that this video has helped you guys. And if you guys know someone that would take a lot of value out of this video, then make sure you share it with them as well. Hit that like button, hit subscribe. Let me know what you guys wanna see next and I'll see you in the next one.